Professor Dave and Chegg here. We are now familiar with acid-base equilibria, and we can label all of these species as either the acid, base, conjugate acid, or conjugate base. We have a generalized acid reacting with water, which will act as a base, which yields hydronium, the conjugate acid, as well as the conjugate base of the acid. But the degree to which an acid will ionize depends on the strength of the acid. How exactly do we determine whether an acid is strong or weak? This can get a little tricky, so let's go over some basic rules and examples. Now let's get a little more technical. When a strong acid dissociates in aqueous solution, every acid molecule will transfer a proton onto a water molecule, forming a hydronium ion, or H3O+. Here is an acid-base reaction involving hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid. Because it is a strong acid, every molecule of acid transfers a proton to a water molecule. Here are some common strong acids. There are weak acids as well, and these also transfer protons to water molecules, but they do not react completely. They will establish some kind of equilibrium between the unionized acid and the conjugate base. Similarly, a strong base will steal a proton from a water molecule to produce a hydroxide ion. Some strong bases are comprised of hydroxide ions themselves. Weak bases, just like weak acids, only partially react. We should note that water can be referred to as amphoteric. This means it can act as either an acid or a base. We saw how water acts as a base in the presence of an acid, becoming hydronium, and in the presence of a base, water can act as an acid, becoming hydroxide. So to reiterate, a strong acid, like hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid, will completely ionize, meaning essentially every single molecule of acid will ionize by transferring a proton to a water molecule. But if the acid is weak, like acetic acid, it will not completely ionize, it will only partially ionize, meaning only some of the acid molecules will transfer a proton to a water molecule, thus establishing this equilibrium. The strength of the acid, or the extent to which an acid will ionize an aqueous solution, depends on its acid dissociation constant, Ka, and the larger the Ka, the more the equilibrium will favor products, which indicates a stronger acid. But how can we know the strength of an acid without knowing the Ka? In short, we really can't say with certainty, but there are some trends we can identify in molecular structure that act as guidelines for predicting acid strength, so let's make sure we know precisely what these are. First, we can note the location on the periodic table of the central atom in the acid or base. If we are looking at the binary acids in group 17, we can note that acidity increases going down the table. This has to do with the size of the anion that will be the conjugate base after deprotonation. The chloride ion is much larger than the fluoride ion, and this affects its ability to accommodate the negative charge. Bromide is larger, and iodide is larger still, which is why hydrobromic acid is stronger than hydrochloric acid, and hydroiodic acid is one of the strongest acids known. We can also say that acid strength increases moving to the right. This has to do with electronegativity. The more electronegative the element, the better it can accommodate a negative charge. So if methane were to deprotonate, carbon would be very bad at accommodating the negative charge, whereas nitrogen is slightly better, oxygen is better still, and fluorine is quite good at accommodating this charge. So the acidity of a central atom increases going down and to the right on the periodic table. By the same token, basicity must therefore increase in the opposite directions, because more electropositive elements are more capable of accommodating positive charges. Next, we can look at molecules that contain hydroxyl groups. These could be acidic, basic, or amphoteric, depending on the nature of the central atom. In order to decide the acidity or basicity of the compound, we have to know whether one bond will break, resulting in hydroxide ions, or another bond will break, resulting in the transfer of a proton to a water molecule, forming a hydronium ion. This depends on the strength of these bonds, which is determined by the electronegativity of the central atom. If it has a low electronegativity, it will not hang on to the electrons in this bond very well. That bond will break, resulting in hydroxide ions, which means the compound was a base. If it has a high electronegativity, it will hold on to the electrons in that bond very tightly, meaning this other bond is more likely to break, generating hydronium, meaning the compound was an acid. In the latter case, with electronegative central atoms, we are necessarily describing oxyacids.
apart from the strength of an oxy acid increasing along with increasing electronegativity for the central atom. Acidity will also increase as the oxidation number of the central atom increases. Nitric acid is a stronger acid than nitrous acid because the nitrogen is plus 5 rather than plus 3. And sulfuric acid is stronger than sulfurous acid for the same reason. So when we are looking at acids and bases, there are factors in terms of molecular structure that determine their strength. We must look at the location of the central atom on the periodic table because this will determine characteristics like ionic radius and electronegativity. We must consider the oxidation state of the central atom, and there are other factors like the extent of resonance stabilization that may apply, although that is a bit beyond our scope here. We now know how molecular structure impacts acid strength, as well as how this parameter can be described quantitatively by Ka values. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.